Tell me in the comments below, how often do you use your crock pot? Today, we've got some favorite crock pot meals here in this video. Y'all are gonna love them as much as we do. We've got the beer braised chicken. This is going to cook on low for seven to eight hours. And then in the last 30 minutes, we're gonna add a cornstarch mixture. A fourth a cup of water, two tablespoons of cornstarch. All right, we're gonna put four thighs into this baggie. And the other thighs I'm gonna be using for another recipe, so I'm gonna set that to the side. Now I'm going to take my cutting board and we're gonna cut up some sausages. These are sausages from Sam's Club that we just repackage to the amount that we need. I'm gonna cut up two of these links because we are gonna use the other two links for a different recipe. Now you can cut these whatever way you like. For us, I'm going to cut them in half long ways and then slice them up and then we will add them to our bag. I've got a red pepper here. I'm gonna dice this up and add it to the bag as well. I wanna hear from you guys. Do you make freezer meals? Do you enjoy freezer meals? Do you like when you're prepped ahead or are you the type that you would just prefer to make it that night? Let's add this can of green chilies. I did go with mild just so this isn't too spicy for the kids. And I am not gonna drain these or anything. We're just gonna dump these right in. We're also gonna add about a tablespoon of hot sauce. We are going to add chili powder, about a tablespoon or so. Gonna add about a teaspoon of paprika. I love paprika. Because we didn't add the onions, I'm gonna add some onion powder around a teaspoon. Got some thyme here, about two teaspoons or so. You can also add salt and pepper. So just about, about a teaspoon of salt. And that is it. Now, a lot of people like to wait on their liquid to add to the bag, and you absolutely can do that, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the beer into this so that I don't have to worry about it later. But again, you do whatever you are most comfortable with. We need 12 ounces. I'm gonna add just half of this can right here. This next recipe is a Dr. Pepper barbecue pulled pork. And obviously you could put this on sandwiches with some slaw. You could just eat it by itself with a nice side, however you wanna make it. But prepping this ahead of time and then just having it for the crock pot is super easy. So you're just gonna cook this in the crock pot for about four hours on high, and then you can serve it with buns and slaw if you'd like to, or again, you could just eat it on the side. The ingredients that we're gonna need for this are Dr. Pepper, a pork shoulder, pork butt, something like that, garlic salt, and barbecue sauce. Literally, that's it. It could not be any easier. We're just combining these ingredients. I've got my pork here in the freezer bag and I'm just gonna start pouring in some of the other ingredients. I'm going to be using one teaspoon of garlic powder. The recipe calls for one 18 ounce bottle of barbecue sauce. This one has a little bit out of it, so it's probably more like 16 ounces, but I'm just gonna add the rest of the bottle to this. And then 12 ounces of Dr. Pepper. So this is a 20 ounce bottle, so I'm not gonna be adding the whole thing, but that's it. That's all you have to add to this, and then you can freeze it, and like I said, you can just cook it in the crock pot. Because of the liquids in this bag, I did decide to double bag it. And I do this often when I'm using baggies. I just wanna make sure that nothing spills in my freezer. So this next recipe is going to be sausage and peppers. All right, so this is sausage and peppers. It's also a crock pot meal. And basically this one is gonna be really incredibly simple. This is just all gonna go in the crock pot and we're gonna cook it on low for five to six hours. All right, this is just preference. I'm going to cut these up and let's see, let's do them a little bit different. Let's not do in half. Well, part of them are gonna be in half because I just did that. But we're just gonna slice it like so into like maybe half inch coins. And then these ones on the end here are gonna be a little different because I changed my mind midway through. Drop those into the bag. Now with this, we're only gonna be using a green bell pepper. Slice it up and then drop it into the bag as well. So All right, you guys have, that have been here for a while know that my husband does not like onion. So I am going to leave these pieces really large. So like, really big enough that he can just pick them out if he chooses not to eat them, which he probably will choose not to eat them. Some of these other smaller pieces, I love, love adding them to 
my breakfast hash. So I do like a potato, an onion. Okay, we're gonna add this can right here of diced tomatoes to the bag. I'm gonna leave the juices with it, so we're not gonna empty that part out. We're not, what am I trying to say? We're not gonna drain it. That's what I'm trying to say. Two to three clo cloves of minced garlic. About a half teaspoon of dried basil. I really like basil, so we might add closer to a full table, a full teaspoon. And same with the oregano. I'm probably gonna go closer to a full teaspoon. We like lots of flavor, guys. And the recipe does not call for salt, but I am gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. We also need approximately a tablespoon of olive oil and just a quick dash of red pepper flakes. If you're sensitive to spice, you could definitely leave this out. All right, so that is everything in the bag. We can seal that up, release the air, and it's ready to go. This would be a great one to serve over rice or like fajita style even, or you can just have a nice little bowl with it. This next recipe that we're making is a Thai peanut chicken. And I already had chicken here in a freezer bag. It's two really large chicken breasts, again, cut into four pieces. I'm starting with a 14 ounce can of coconut milk and pouring that whole thing here into the bag. I'm also gonna be adding about a half a cup of peanut butter. Whenever I measure peanut butter, I honestly don't measure it with a measuring cup because even if I spray it with Pam, I just feel like it's too hard to get all the peanut butter out. So I just kind of eyeball this one. I am also gonna be adding one tablespoon spoon of ginger. I'm adding two teaspoons of curry powder and this pretty much completes the curry powder that I had. One teaspoon of cumin. The recipe also calls for a garam masala but actually I don't have that right now so I'm gonna skip that step and then after this I am adding a half of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I want to be careful with these because I want to make sure that it's not too spicy for my kids so I actually went a little less than a half of a teaspoon. Now for the liquid ingredients other than the coconut milk I'm adding three tablespoons of lime juice, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and we have the low sodium soy sauce, one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil, and then about three tablespoons of honey, but this is gonna finish off our honey, so it's, like I said, it's roughly three tablespoons. I am also adding in about two teaspoons of minced garlic, and then just because I had it and I thought it would be good, I am just gonna put in a little bit of this ginger paste that I have that I got at Aldi and I just feel like this adds really good flavor. Now with this one, because I already had chicken in the bag, I'm having to write on it after putting everything in and like I said, it's a whole lot easier to do this ahead of time. You could make this one in the Instant Pot or the Crock Pot. If I were gonna make it in the Instant Pot, I would cook it for about 15 minutes on high pressure and then let it naturally release. And then if I were cooking it in the Crock Pot, I would cook on high for about four hours. You could easily serve this over rice or in lettuce cups. There's several different ways that this one could be really good. I make baked potato soup and I love to prep this one ahead of time because it does take a little bit more prep work. So this way everything is ready to go. We can make this in the crock pot or the instant pot. If you're cooking it in the crock pot, then you wanna cook it on high for about five hours and then add some heavy cream right at the end. You're gonna see here that I'm also gonna be adding ground beef to mine and I like to cook it ahead of time and then I like to add the ground beef about 30 minutes before serving just to make sure that it reheats. I'm gonna dice up about five large potatoes. You could actually buy the bags of frozen potatoes and that would make this step even easier, but I already had the potatoes so for cost effectiveness, I went ahead and just diced them up myself want to add about a cup of shredded carrots. Once you've got your carrots and your potatoes in the bag, you could also add celery. I chose not to, but I'm going to add four cups of chicken broth to this. I'm also adding some minced garlic and I am running low on this, so I probably ended up adding about a teaspoon and a half, but ideally for this recipe, you would have three teaspoons. I'm also gonna add a little bit of butter to this. So I'm adding about a fourth a cup of butter or maybe three tablespoons is what I ended up adding. I am adding two teaspoons of salt and about a half a teaspoon of pepper. 
most potato recipes call for diced ham, but I actually don't like ham. So there are like three things that I really don't like to eat and ham just happens to be one of them. So instead I am adding ground beef. And so I have about a pound of ground beef here that I'm just gonna go ahead and saute. I'm gonna go ahead and cook it up and have it ready to go. And then I'm going to let it cool and put it in a separate freezer bag. Now you could store these completely separately in your freezer, or if you wanna be like me, you can go ahead and put it in a separate freezer bag and put that freezer bag inside of the one that has the potato soup in it. And then as I said before, you just want to cook all of your other ingredients in your crock pot or your instant pot. Your beef's already cooked, so it really doesn't need to sit in there either you know, for five hours in your crock pot or in the instant pot for several minutes. So you can just add that at the end and just reheat it and let it get warmed up. And that is it for the baked potato soup. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, crock pot favorite meals. If you wanna see more crock pot meals, we love doing those here on my channel. Check out this playlist right here. It's gonna give you tons of crock pot inspiration. You're gonna get all that you need for this fall season. I hope you're having a great week.